<laughs> and we're here. All right. Yeah, Welcome, everyone, to our wonderful little session of Gaming for Inspiration. We have three amazing panelists with us today. Um, get your questions and started because once we get going, we're not stopping. All right. So we're going to actually start with Siska. Would you like to introduce Siska. yourself? Yeah, a uh, one. It's Seska. I know it's. It doesn't look like it pronounces. It's Hispanic. I'm Hispanic, and we just like doing our things our way. Um. So I am Seska Small. I have five years of podcasting experience on sci-fi shenanigans, blasters, and blades, and I will setting up a new podcast to be released. And I will um, once everything's live and set up. You know, we'll get it going because uh, podcast titles are like book titles. We all keep them under wraps until they're ready to go. Um, <laughs> but I am the Fantasy Lit Track Director at Dragon Con. I have staffed with Liberty Con, volunteered at numerous other conventions. And I have done, actually during the pandemic, I did a online podcast on YouTube doing video um, RPGs and uh, playing them online and with the in wonderful likes of like James Ward and um, Jay Parker and oh, I'm forgetting his name now. Somebody else, Eric, Eric something, not Eric Flint, but I can't remember his name. <laughs> oh, Flint Dilly, that's it, Flint Dilly. <laughs> and um, so it was a lot of fun. Nice. How about you, Sean? Uh, my name is Sean Hall. I'm the author of Goblin Apocalypse. Uh, it's my first book. I also have Goblin Wrath. I'm currently halfway through book three, which I'm calling Goblin Rain. And then I also am half, about 50,000 words into a new series as well. So I'm kind of double writing at the same time, which has been interesting. <laughs> it's fun. Also, a uh, big beta reader. I read for a lot of authors in this genre, as Jay can attest to <laughs> so <laughs> it's very true he started as an, an amazing super fan and now he's gone into amazing author mode so yep got inspired um just working with all these authors and everything and said you they're know I, I think this is something i can do so they're contagious that's they it's kind of how most of us started we all were like <laughs> i like this genre yeah i can do this too <laughs> i think i could do this Okay. All right. All right, Jay. Hi, I'm Jay. Um, <laughs> I write things. Like, um, I write the A Touch of Power in the Mystic Mage series. Um, that's people. If if you don't know me, that's that's cool. Just go look it up. <laughs> then they're new to the genre. If they don't I know hate you. introductions. I mean, if they don't know you, they're missing out. I'm going to say exactly. that. I, I'm biased. I, but... I'm the wig queen. That's all you need to know. <laughs> and the panelist queen, because you go and bother Seska all the time to be on more Dragon Con panels. They're not on mine. I have nothing to do with her getting on other panels. They were outside originally. the track officially. <laughs> officially. <laughs> officially. I will tell you, like, rule number one. I know this is off topic of the panel, but we did say we'd time it in minutes to how long we went till we went off the rails. Jay and I um, <laughs> always reach out to the organizers. And if you're not, if you are, even if you don't think you're at a convention, like you're in a small podunk convention in the middle of nowheresville, you might still be in front of people who you, who have connections other places and you may not know it. Yep. So I always tell people if you're not in your room, you're on the stage. So it's true. completely understandable. Yes. All right. That seems to be the case so, with this genre, too. I mean, you never know who you're talking to and what kind of connections they might have outside of that. You know, it's a very tight-knit community, it seems like. Everyone seems to know everyone else. <laughs> so. Well, and the other thing is, like, you will. Authors, authors and, like, volunteer organizers, they have this level of, um, I've heard people call it the fun fame. Because they are people who, yeah, we people want our attention or want your author atten your attention because they're fans. But they only know that when you're at conventions. You can still go to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. 
Unless you're Brandon Sanderson, because, well, he'd probably get lost. I mean, he does have people who buy his groceries for him. I, he lives about five minutes away from me, so I can say this. Um, <laughs> he, he does have people who do that for him so that he doesn't have to, because he does get swarmed everywhere. No, I'll his house it. is really cool, by the way. I like it. <laughs> Boom. I'm cooler than you. Boom. That's right. All right, so we're going to get started with a, our first question, um, which is what games or aspects of gaming do you use or have you used in your writing process? TTRPG, virtual reality, D&D, Pathfinder. I mean, what what aspects have, have you used in, in writing? Um, let's start with... Let's start with Jay on this one. Like, okay, so, like, to be fair, I, I have my little dice roller here. That dice queen. Dice you, dragon. the dice queen. Dice Good dragon. Time. I'm also wearing my dice shirt. Like, um, thank you. I might need these later. <laughs> uh, Answer is she will, and you may not always like why. She doesn't have enough. I don't. I may only have, like, 7,000 dice. Okay, it's, I'm going to say this one. That's like telling a knitter that there's enough yarn, knitting needle, or a reader that there's enough books. You're wrong if you think <laughs> so. We don't need that kind of negativity. There are never enough dice. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so uh, I do all... I, I, I don't do a ton of online gaming these days just because I don't like toxic communities. <laughs> They they can if you're really not careful. What was the thing you told me this summer? Beware anything that has a Discord server to go with it. Yes, that's I. That is fact. Um, because I I have I I. So here's the thing: I get easily addicted to stuff. <laughs> so I have to be very careful what I allow myself to play because if I do that, then I lose days and I don't do anything else. So, um, I have I, I have Stardew Valley. That is one of my big ones, um, and it's just my chill, relax game. Um, and that's the only big one that I'm playing these days, just because it's I can just focus uh, on myself. And oh, I play Ace of I I play Settlers of Catan by myself all the time. Oh, that one's a fun game. I, 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 I honestly play it online think all the play time. By myself, I just play against bots just because it's like super fast for me. And I'm just like, it's just easy for me to like zone out while I'm playing and just veg for a minute to try and get my brain going again. So, yeah, no, I roll for like for loot and for happenings and everything else like that. So, it, and I, I've played a whole bunch of TTRBGs. I played one at Brandon's house the other week. So, I mean, <laughs> that's... Jay is just cooler than all of us. Let's just face that. Yep. Exactly. I mean, it's just it's just that way. All right. What about you, Sean? Um, I don't necessarily use any formats from any of the games in my current writings. Um, I mean, my... my series that's out now is pretty light on any statistics and it's just kind of your basic experience rpg type deal you know get experience gain some levels get x amount of points type deal but um my stats are like maybe one or twice each book so i'm, I'm very light on that aspect but i would say i probably lean heavily more into like the final fantasies you know like six and the early ones, if I had to lean towards one of them, not like seven through nine or seven through well, ten. Seven through well, ten are seven through ten are the ones that I like vibed with as a kid. Yeah, I mean six was so like one of my favorite ones, and then um, now you got seven, and the remakes have been really good on that one as well. Has uh, it? Uh, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to the what second part of Final Fantasy VII remake. Except now I need a PlayStation Five if I want to play it. So there's that. Yeah, see, I haven't had a, a game console since two. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> yes, that. 
Okay. Even I have a more recent game console, and I've only ever bought two. I, have I, had, I had one and two. Those five. are the only game. And I had my N64 console. N64, PS1, PS2. And those are the only three consoles that I've ever owned. You should get a Switch. You'd love it. Yeah, Switch. No, I should not. I would be addicted. And I would. Then, we then can people be right, complaining about where's your next book? It's been two years. No. I mean, they already complain about that. I already have enough things that distract me. I do not need more. Okay, guys. I don't even <laughs> own a TV. play together. I don't even have a TV, honey. I only have a TV because I have Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about you, Seska? Um, I grew up gaming. So uh, <laughs> to me, gaming was a way of was life uh in a in a way um i joke that i'm the result of what happens when you let first gen dnd years keep the kid <laughs> um it, it's very true though so uh i i think for me it depends on what it is i'm doing if it is like why i'm blocked if i'm blocked because i'm frustrated with something uh i play a lot of um Diablo 3 because I can just murder things over and over and over again and it makes me feel better. Um sometimes I name the creatures. Uh, the names don't need to be shared, but sometimes I name the creatures what's annoying me, but um and I play a lot of Monster Hunter. Uh I like Monster Hunter stories too. And then uh I like Rune I've just started playing Rune Factory 5. I kind of like some of those when um, I'm just feeling very overwhelmed because it gives you something easier to focus on and let your brain relax. And well, I uh, nobody should play Diablo three right before bed with the volume on, especially not in my neighborhood because there's no street lights in my neighborhood. <laughs> that seems like completely a, yeah. understood. Let's let's not do that. That seems bad. So. so we're going to jump to a question from Sharon Schultz with a little bit added on. Um, what games are you currently playing? And is there anything from them you'd like to incorporate into your books, current or future? And do you have go-to games when you face a mental block? I kind of... Oh, I'm playing Ebony. Yeah, we'll start with Seska on this one. I am playing Ebony, much to Jay's disgust um, and frustration. I'm doing much better with it since I just left the missing you out. Okay, stop. It was. It's not now because I uninstalled Discord. So I don't interact with the Discord people. <laughs> but for me, I just like poke at the screen. I call it my poking game because it's a mobile game and I poke at the screen. And. Um, I don't know. I enjoyed the poking at the screen and when they're like, tactics! And I'm like, I don't play tactics. I poke at the screen. I poke at the screen. <laughs> at the screen. Uh, you know, that it's great. You just go... And if you want to throw it, you put it down. Because throwing the phone is... It's very aerodynamic, but don't do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, don't ruin your phone like that. That seems like a bad plan. So. a piece of hardware. Uh, it is a very expensive piece of hardware. It costs more than my laptop. Yep. So, I mean, my computer is way more expensive than my phone, but I built you it. You have myself. a gaming computer. I, I have built a it myself. So, yes. I have a Switch, and that's one of the things I like about the Switch. I mean, okay, to be fair, I, my, if, I, if I have to say I bought a gaming system, my gaming system is my PC. And that's also that's why I don't have a TV. Is right. if I just if I want to watch something, I just watch it on my computer. Oh yeah, when I lived in the barracks, I had like a eighteen inch t laptop, and I have a thirty five inch monitor. And I'm like, there's no point in buying a TV if you have a thirty five inch monitor unless you're going really big. Yeah. I don't really so my TV's ten year over ten years old. So I, TV. I have dual monitors that are large, and I can watch anything I want on them. But is there a line in between? 
I mean, yes, but I would only put a movie on one of them and then the other one I would be my ADD self and be doing other things while I watch something because I don't have, <laughs> I have the attention span of a two-year-old. I know, but I love you as a two-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very interesting relationship. True. Yeah. So that's what about like you, Sean? Cool. We're good. Um, current currently playing was uh sea of stars i actually just did a uh, hundred percent completion on that one that was fun wasn't that um, an anime kind of it was like old school it was a kickstarter that came out uh originally and i backed it like two years ago and it finally came out so i got a chance to play it and i was enjoying that one um and then horizon is another one i really like and play that one that's kind of like my go-to oh that's so post-apocalyptic though yeah well, and that's that's kind of where my writing is is post apocalyptic stuff. So I know, but I find it sometimes a little depressing. Eh. Rosa Pop can be very depressing. Yeah, well, I mean, depending on how it's done, but I, I thought Horizon was really well done, both one and two. And then of course it came out with DLC for two that only works on the five. So another reason why I need a PlayStation Five so I can play my DLC. So once you get his play so none of your fans should get you a PlayStation 5 because they'll never see the next book though. No, they'll still <laughs> they'll see a book. I, I got four kids. There's no way I'm tied to that system, but, <laughs> <laughs> but a five would be great. Dear gods, I don't think I, I can handle that. that problem. Yeah. Four kids, three guinea pigs, and a dog that thinks it's a cat because I don't listen to you at all. Oh, see, my dog keeps poking her, her head in and going, I want my piano too, KT. It's, it's not mine. It's, it's he's just using a background to hide his mess. Exactly. <laughs> I'm honest. I own my mess. I know. I'm like, uh, I don't want to own my mess. I, I, I put up a blanket <laughs> so that I it would hide some of my mess. Them completely. Trust As he me. has like the perfect you, bookshelf behind him. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me. You don't want to see hey, what's off to my right. It just doesn't. <laughs> It's just, I, say that I mean, I used to no, podcast in a big wingback on. chair that had so that nobody could see anything past the chair. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it worked much so better cool. than this green screen that's not quite working. Yeah. But it keeps throwing so, people off. Everyone thinks I have a nice baby grand in the background, which is great. <laughs> amazing. That's so. Great. This one is directed specifically to Jay because I know that you currently aren't playing any games, but the audience wants to know how many tiaras do you actually have? As many enough, dice as she has, she has enough tiaras. to keep switching for this whole. <laughs> uh, Better question is how many wigs she has, and the answer is. As numerous as the stars. As many as it takes. So we won't <laughs> answer that question because it's the best thing in the world that she I have two wigs now and I'm blaming her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. One, two, three. I mean, four. I do know you have at least one. We counted. You have at least 64 because you're like, I have one for each half day in October. <laughs> That's 64. Oh, wigs, I have over 100. I don't. I don't actually know how many I have anymore because I stopped counting. Just way too many. <laughs> so, so she collects Yara wigs and dice one every day in October too. <laughs> right. So we're going to grab from George McKibben for the next question, and it's a bit long, so it might cover up some faces. So I apologize. Um, <laughs> so I'm planning out my first book and basically incorporating game events from some games I want to make studied video game designing, but making these games would need like three ballers gate, three budgets. Any previous creative endeavors that influence your work now? Um, uh, let's start with Sean on this one. I have no idea how to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I got to reread that one again. <laughs> so let's what go. games, what previous games that you've played or seen or creative endeavors or or creative endeavors influence what you're working on or what you want to be working on? Well, I mean, again, going back to Horizon, that one has definitely influenced also a lot of the post-apocalyptic uh, books in the genre. I've read most of them. Um, 
kind of hard to be sure now since there always seems to be something coming out lately. So do you read non lit RPG post poc? No. Uh, all, all I read is lit RPG. I mean, right now, it's actually, mo and most of the books I'm reading aren't even out right now. I do a lot of um, right, right. beta reading. AT Hannah right wants now. to say Fallout. Fallout, Fallout, Fallout is, yeah, definitely a good one. <laughs> so, um, I have a couple yeah. that I, uh, so like, again, I, I fall back on my PS1 games. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, um, my favorite three, like, I'm going to say my favorite three games were Final Fantasy 7 through 10. Um, okay, that's I'm counting those games. as one, though, because <laughs> that's the Final Fantasy franchise is one. <laughs> and then go. there were two others that I really, really loved from PS1, and that's Legend of the Dragoon, um, which was fantastic and very forward for its time. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Azure Dreams, actually, Ooh, which right. it's a great one. mindless tower climber. It yep. is. It's a great mindless tower climber, monster tamer. Um, so I kind of actually really want to. There is a book that I read that's a Chinese web novel that um, is, it was called I Can Enter the Game, um, which did it did a like he could enter into a farming game and i loved it okay guys it was crazy and he started pulling out the weirdest i it it was it was the farming game done great and it was <laughs> it is a train wreck of epic proportions that i love <laughs> <laughs> but so i'm gonna ask if a question that kind of is yeah, related please. to this. I'm going to hijack, but how do you make sure because, I mean, game mechanics can be I'm not sure copyrighted, but uh, I and maybe they can be. I, I'm not the, well, the and you'll notice that. that a lot of us so how do you be as a base? Yeah. But I mean, I remember reading a lit RPG, and I do not remember which one it was, and it felt like it was exactly Sword Art Online. Like, the game everything and i'm just like how is this not like getting into because some of the copyright issues because the, that's no. that's the the oh thanks it's it's actually the cover of my fourth book and it's a blanket <laughs> jay loves blankies so um, I got one of those. I, i'm gonna do this really quickly don't judge my room oh goodness i love I love your posters. I mean, so those are blankets. Those are blankets. Those are blankets. Yeah. <laughs> oh. They're all blankets. So. Yeah. But I mean, you've got your felikai, you've got your dragons. I mean, they're, they're just, just makes everything better. Covers without the words on them. <laughs> yeah, it just makes everything better. They make me happy, and so like I have to put stuff up so that I, yeah, it, it, it makes my space. <laughs> I have to have the happy things, okay, guys. Don't worry about it. No, it's important. So, in that same sense, and I mean, I know we're focused on gaming, but you say you got to have your happy things. Does that influence since you're writing with that in that same sense? Does that give you inspiration? Yeah, I mean, that's. Everything is, I use like, so I used to work at a university where, who's got the dog barking? I'm sorry. Mine. Don't worry. Viking will be taking care of it or Viking will not be having, well, he doesn't want to have dinner, but he won't be having dessert either. Uh, but yeah, like everything, I used to work as a university with deaf students. And so I would attend all of their classes with them and type everything everyone said so they could read along. But I went to classes from literally every single major. Um, I have attended hundreds and hundreds of, of college courses. And each of those, like you draw inspiration into your books from literally everything you do. Um, and that's the thing, like, yes, like, I find something, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I want to put that in. Or, like, 
all of that, you just pick and choose things and everything like to be fair most everything's already been done it's just adding a new twist to it like the story doesn't change all that much which is why you get the ones that you're like oh this kind of looks like sword Art online this is why genshin impact which is one of the other games that i have actually played has a lot of things that are very yep. similar to other games like all of the games are going to have basic things and that actually is a comfort thing and it helps us to be able to get into them faster because we already have a basis to build on. So that's part of why these books are successful is because they build on the basis of games that we've all been playing since we were kids. And that's why we love them is because well, it gives us that. I mean, that's also why so many people buy in specific trips. Mm -hmm. yep. So... But you also still oh. want to be careful because you still don't want to deal with an IP lawsuit because even if it's Just frivolous, it's me. not the kind of publicity you want. Just don't that is true. Me. And it gets so, expensive. Um, so on Remember that same... Guy that just to take them off and pop a new one on, is that what's going on over here? <laughs> or are you just randomly doing it? I'm just... Whenever I feel like it, I put one to She's the side. She's secretly rolling a dice, and whenever it rolls a six, <laughs> she changes. I, I would not. I would not doubt that at all. I can tell when she's working on games uh, on on the game mechanics of her story because I'll hear the random clicking of dice as we're talking. <laughs> she, I'm like, what are you doing? I'm just rolling up. You know, I have a new character, and I'm just trying to figure out what they're going to be. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> So on that same point um, where you get inspiration from, do you find retro or modern games to be the most inspiring for you? Mm. Let's start with both. Jay on this one. I mean, to be fair, like, I, again, I mostly play retro games just because I like single player, not pay to play, not, yeah. I'm not a PvP -er. I'm really not. <laughs> I, I do not, I do not like the drama. I just, I play games to relax. Um, but yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, um, so the big like, I I've played one MOBA, one MMO, and one, or I guess I've played two MMOs. I've played Genshin Impact, and then I also played. Um, can't even remember the name of it now. Gosh. Ah, that's okay. gonna bother me. Blade and Soul. That, that's it. Oh, Blade and Soul. Yeah. And I actually really love Blade and Soul just because I loved how pretty the maps were. I liked like my favorite thing to do in Blade and Soul was just there there was this one canyon where you could use airstreams to fly up and then just glide around the really pretty scenery. And I did that all the time because I just like I just like to go see all the really pretty scenery in the game. And like that's I would avoid the PvP zones because they had specific zones, thankfully, that like were the PvP zones. And I would avoid those with like a passion because it's like I don't like the PV. I just want to like go and wander the world. I did that. I like flying in Pokemon um Scarlet and Violet and um and Monster Hunter stories and just kind of flying. It's kind of calming. Reads yeah. in. So Sean, same question. Can retro or modern games be most inspiring for you? I mean, it, both, really, because, I mean, it's great to go back and have the nostalgia of those retro games. Like, there was one I used to play all the time when I was younger called Ogre Battle, which kind of was a rare Super Nintendo game. <laughs> and I had two <laughs> copies of it, which I stumbled across. Um, but it was, a, it was a fun little game I would play all the time. And, um, yeah, so just mechanics, it, you seem carried through. Um, retro games all through nowadays. I mean, you look at Final Fantasy as a perfect example. I mean, back in the NES, right? And all mm -hmm. the way up through PlayStation 5 type deal. So, um, yeah, they changed things up a little bit, but it still, you know, went from what, turn-based RPG to now an action RPG, right? But a lot of the background mechanics are still the same. So it, I, I go either way on those ones. I don't necessarily have a preference. I've been playing some newer games, but then I bought the uh, 
what Final Fantasy Repixel, and I've been going through all those games. Now I'm on like no, I'm on the final one on that one too for six. Dude, I tried to replay Final Fantasy VIII this year sometime. I don't remember when, and I was like, oh gosh, this like the game mechanics are so much worse than I remember. Oh, the school, the other one was this, the gardens, right? That's the gardens, yeah. Yeah, but like so here's that, the that thing, I didn't care much for. So that one, I actually, um, I I used to write fanfic for that one, and that was one of my ones that I did fanfic for because I really liked academy settings, and so we could yeah. take the world and just go oh. with it. And so, like, I think about it, I'm like, I've been writing progression fantasy since I was a kid because I did this, and I would go and I and I would write with other people on these. We would have forums, and and we would all create our students, and I would progress my person through the seeds and like all of the things. And so, like, I been writing progression fantasy since i was a kid just as fanfic yeah which none of it's available so don't ask <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i, I don't even have access to it anymore okay? <laughs> it's not there no, it's the internet it's over there somewhere somebody can find it's it it's true <laughs> so what about you saska um I guess I enjoy some of the retro games. Uh, I'm not as crazy about some of the, like the call, like the let's just reboot it. Um, like I, I, I didn't, I was not that crazy about the new Pokemon game, um, but it was very dark and that may be part of it. Um, I kind of feel like if you're, I'd rather see someone continue a franchise than reboot a franchise. Does that make sense? But I feel that way, whether it's about Star Trek or comic books or anything. So that's a, a pretty consistent evaluation. Keep rotating it, babe. Rotate. No. No. We're, it's, hard. Like, it's hard. It's hard. Okay. I still, I would still like oh, to see some of the remade, okay. though. Now you're looking like beautiful Princess Peach. It's it's uh, some of them are a lot harder to get on and stay on. Okay, guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I, enjoy some, I thought it was great. Zelda brought, came back, except for the fact that Zelda drives me nuts. But that's yeah. Me. But it would be good to see some of the older retro games like remade into Absolutely. more. Oh, I, like I I would love to see Breath of Fire come back. I would love to yeah. see Sailor Moon remade. Gosh. I'd I love to see I'm Sailor sorry. Moon remade. <laughs> Though apparently the uh, Gargoyles remake that they did for remastered. Is really kind of clunky, the yeah. Gargoyles one. Dude, I tried to rewatch Gargoyles and I was like, oh, like there's a lot of things that I let slide as a kid because that was the only option we had and I didn't realize how bad it was. Well, because you're a kid and you're developing those tastes and stuff. Right. I'm like, there is definitely stuff that I've gone back to. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, is, I used to watch this. this. Not what I remember. I like, remember watching the nanny and then I did not up. cover enough. <laughs> no. Oh, God. So, There's definitely okay. some aspects of like, mm, can we rethink this all the way through? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've got another question from Sharon Schultz. Um, and this is one that I'm intrigued by because there are some games that have Our influenced me when it comes to my book. Um, what, what games have most influenced you? Um, let's start with uh, uh jay on this one i mean i'm gonna just keep repeating the same game so far. <laughs> yeah i'm like okay uh, one i haven't mentioned is league of legends um oh i love i started that in college because of a guy <laughs> i'm not gonna i won't lie i won't sugarcoat it i started it because of a guy i started <laughs> playing because i wanted to date a guy um but i played it for 10 years <sighs> you know i definitely played I definitely so the game did. lasted longer than he did got it <laughs> yeah i never actually dated it <laughs> never. that's played so for a guy that you never dated such the problem oh, with me. but yeah yeah no, that no, did no. Not me. the game lasted yeah it was the the uh so that's one of the ones where i i that has actually influenced me a lot because it made me realize that I like, um, especially with top down, like it made me realize that I like kiting people. 
<laughs> I'm like, I am not going to be the melee fighter. I will never be the melee fighter. I am going to fight you. I'm going to like kite you to death. And that has influenced a lot of my books is because I like to be the, I do not like to be the up in your face fighter. I like to be the, the damage dealer who is just going to shoot cool. you constantly until you die. That's yeah. right. <laughs> my crown is falling. It's not comfortable. <laughs> it's all right. It's we'll see the next one soon. All right. <laughs> so Sean, on that point, and let's see. Uh, a game that influenced. Um, one I haven't mentioned is Thief. That's a, an old school. It wasn't a game about like, killing people it was actually like sneaking around and getting around things like uh you'd get like a, a blackjack and you'd knock somebody out but it wasn't about like killing anybody it was just trying to get to the objective and um my character uh, is kind of a i don't know he likes to use daggers so he's up close and personal and kind of sneaking around a little bit so you're the opposite of me yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm, throw. I'm gonna throw arrows and magic at you. You're gonna stab me in the back. Yep, stabby McStaverton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, about you, Saska. Um. So I would say, video game wise, one of them is uh, I did not play many video games, so I played some on the computer, but. Played a lot of Heroes of Might and Magic on the computer. Oh, that was fun. Uh, oh, yeah. I still have some have them. You can get them through Steam. Oh. And I, I still play them. I like them because they're turn-based, which means my ADHD yep. can go off kilter and come back without destroying something. <laughs> um, so well, I'm so so with people open in the house can play, them. too. Is like, I can't mm -hmm. look away. Yeah. Bo uh, Dungeon Keeper was definitely a, a formative influence on my life. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was also the first time I ever wanted to cosplay. Not that I knew what that was at the time. My poor mother. Um, <laughs> I wanted to pop cosplay one of the Dark Mistresses. And if you know anything about that game, you don't want your 16-year-old daughter cosplaying that. Nope. Um, I played all of them, James. And I think I still own all of them thanks to Steam. Um, <laughs> and I even have made my child play them. Uh, I think though D and D was always one that I grew up with. I don't remember a time without it. And uh, particularly a D and D. And then I really enjoyed the Buck Rogers RPG when I was doing that online it during the pandemic on, and you can oh, okay. find them on YouTube from on a con to couch, I think. And mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it because I kind of had forgotten how it was like it reinvigorated me. I've forgotten how much I enjoyed playing those games like that. If anybody who is over the age of 20 knows you get sucked out into life and then you come back and you go, oh, I forgot how much I loved this. <laughs> yep. Do you know what? I'm going to actually okay. add something on here. It's not a game. Yes, it's not a game that I played, but Jumanji. Jumanji. Yes. Jumanji. Oh my gosh. It was like the first Isekai Portal Fantasy. Yeah. That I really. No. It, well, well you're I too really young to remember. That. So TSR did yeah, a Dungeons really and Dragons that. TV show. Oh, yeah. That was. Not but very but well that done. was. Jumanji was the one that. And it was Robin Williams. So, of course. Oh, well, Robin Jumanji. Williams. Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, I mean, come on. Yeah. So. Like, that's the thing. Like, that was one that definitely influenced me is because I was like, oh, that's oh. cool. Like, someone so, from our world, Portal, and, like, all of this yeah. stuff that came with it. I so. mean, lit RPG is neat in that it, it really brings forward the big mechanics of it. And it's, and that's what really makes it different than if you look at, um, so <laughs> there's been a long history in speculative fiction, particularly science, uh, fantasy, of I'd call the precursors of lit RPG in that like Margaret Weiss, uh, Tracy Hickman make and other authors, tons of authors who took the adventures from their D and D campaigns and stuff like that and took them and put them into story format. But it just, I, I have not, but Oh my gosh, I have a funny story about that one day. I'll tell Jay. Uh, um, but I'll make sure to remind you. Um, 
so it it's funny because I will end up with people going, well, isn't it just like, and I'm like, the difference is the game mechanics are in the book, are in the book and they're much more forward in the book. So, and they're, they're very blatantly put in there. I, I, I tell people there's no subtlety about the game mechanics. In there, a was, there was a panel yesterday about show, not tell. Yeah. Um, but like, and that's the thing is like, we're able to skip some of that and just blatantly hmm. show it because I mean, yeah. there's a David Very Weber will actually point blank say he worked. And the reason why Bane always does a award at Gen Con is because so many authors to have a background in gaming that then went into it, into writing novels and David Weber, his, I think it's Starfall. There was a game that he worked with and it's the mechanics for a lot of the early Royal Manticore and Navy space fights come from that. Yeah. And, or as I like to call them, the waves of missiles. I'm like, just write waves of missiles, David. Waves. But his fans get really pissy when you just say, it's just a wave of missiles. Sure. I mean, to be fair, I used a wave of missiles for, for a uh, Lotus or for yeah for Lotus. I know, I know, I and I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Oh, and I was like, amazing. "Wave of missiles, yes!" Yeah. Um, I spilled chemicals on my hand because I was giggling so hard. <laughs> so, so going a little bit off topic, um, in the reverse, I guess. Do you avoid gaming during your writing, or is it your relief time from writing? And I'm going to direct this one at Sean. I mean, it's my relief pretty... time from life, man. <laughs> I got, yeah. um, whether I'm writing, I mean, I work a full time job. I got four different side hustles I do, four kids. I mean, yeah. So, four is your favorite number, huh? It seems like it. I mean, I just say four, but I probably have more side hustles than that. But I work a lot. So, when I get a chance to play, which is usually like, early Saturday morning, Sunday morning before everyone else is awake. <laughs> you know, it's my time to relax. So. I definitely play games a lot more than that. Just whenever I just need a break. But again, like my, my games are usually Stardew Valley and Settlers because they're, they're very sectioned into, I can play this by myself for a little while and just zone out. And then at the end of the, the little day in game, I can go do something else again. And so I can put them in like easy, biteable snips where I can just, I can turn on like, okay, just think about it something. Doesn't, it doesn't continue while one year away is the thing that I love right. about those things. And and like I, I definitely have to stay away from the games that make me like like Genshin Impact. I stopped playing it because I, and and Blade and Soul. Both of those games I stopped playing because I hated the daily login stuff and feeling like I was missing yeah. out because I had to log yeah. in daily. I hate I hate that like that is one of the reasons why I like the old games is because they don't have that mechanic of if you don't log in every day you're going to miss something. Yeah. Well, oh, dear that all the games have nowadays. Yeah, that uh, every single working, um, addictive game no. has now. Animal Crossing does it too. Everything does it now. And and yeah. it bothers oh. the heck out of me cuz I'm like yeah. I the daily logins kill me. I do not have the time to devote to that. Not anymore. So, no, you, you you're busy writing me a new book. Right. True. Hey, <laughs> we'll wait as long as it takes, Jay. Yes. Just write next one. Write quality. That's all I ever ask. Yep. We'll as wait as long as it takes. So just go at a faster pace now. than Xander, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> She's the least better than Patrick Ruffus, no matter what she does. That's true. That's true. That is true. Yeah. So, so is it more for relaxation for you? Who or is it do you use it for inspiration as well? Mine is more relaxation, yeah. although eventually I'm going to write like there are three other sellers that can tell I really want to write, which I now want to write like a, a farming game book. I want to write a tower climber because I've always loved Azure Dreams. You um, should do Settlers of Catan. 
I don't know how to make that into a book. To be you know fair. the former CFO of it. I don't. Okay. Well, we could totally That's... turn turn uh, your books hooks into a game. I mean, in Jay, it it'd be easy. I to be fair with Lotus Lake, especially, I could hundred percent like if the technology was on par, that would be really a lot easier to turn into a game than anything else because I yeah. actually have the mechanics and stuff out so like exactly. <laughs> i made the mechanics like if if the vr was up to speed i could absolutely do that um oh, it absolutely. would require so much vr and ai though and yeah it would but yeah. what about you sethka uh, I am mostly is it i mostly use it for whatever. relaxing though i kept calling jay on um when playing Ebony this summer and going, this is like a like somebody should make a lit RPG novel of this because oh my gosh, the drama, the drama was insanity. I mean, oh yeah, no, it's insanity. It, it, it is it is like a, something that only you could write out of a lit RPG novel. Like I literally thought at one point, I'm like, am I living in an alternate reality? So here's the thing: I used to, I, I definitely do this still. Um, I I liked those really terrible Atome games because I was I was reading about them. And I was like, Let me look at them. Let me go take a look. And so I got involved in one. And I, being the competitive person that I am, became the top of my server and had people try to dox me. Wait, you're competitive? What? No. <laughs> I was like, also, okay. I need more panels. <laughs> so and so has more than me. What? No. Oh goodness. But like, here's the thing. Like, I, it was a little game that was like a story game, and then we were having like competitions on palace banquets. <laughs> and, like, it was so bad. It was a dress up game, guys. It was a dress up game, and people tried to dox me over it. Okay. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, is, not like, even surprised. How- that is yeah. how bad it gets. Well, okay. it is so but here's bad. the thing, and there's some articles. Okay, so doxing, James. Doxing is revealing somebody's real life information, typically, or, or it, it it giving somebody's name. I made the mistake of telling them I was an author, and so they like they would go and they would leave bad reviews. So, and like, uh, I, I mean, really so. Like, like doxing is if you say if you're it can vary it can be like somebody as simple as filing a complaint of harassment that's supposed to be confident and then it being revealed who it is to all the way up to somebody going oh this person who's playing my game on under or a pseudonym or a screen name well their real name is and this is where, and it can even go as far as this is where they live. Or even if, even if an author uses a pen name and somebody decides to publicize what that pen name, that legitimate name is, their real name, their legal mundane name. So it's basically, it's a huge violation of privacy and it is enforceable internationally. And in fact, we had a case of that playing Ebony over the summer where we had resource sellers because one of the things, and there's some articles coming out now about the the online, the mobile games where you can pay. Um, in this case, actually, it was human traffickers who tried to do it to my friend. And uh, because they were doing resource selling and they were using that money to as a way to launder money in human trafficking that we also, we found out was also used to fund terrorism like Hamas recently <laughs> like it, it was a whole thing and jay got to hear me sitting there going like you couldn't write this except for in a story there's there's a lot of things that we like people are like that's unrealistic no it's it's no. it's really not it's like real. you yeah. would be surprised at the crazy stuff that people so that and, and the, the thing is uh, normally it's people who do doxing it's done very maliciously and by people who are trying to force somebody to back down or back off or a whole story in the news about it not too long ago with Harvard. Yeah. Well, and, and like, here's the thing, like I definitely like, especially in like Lotus Lake, I talk about how she's like, Oh yeah, I'm the only girl. And like the, some of the sexism and stuff that we get as a woman playing, 
That oh, yeah. especially it's when I was me. playing League uh, was really, really bad. Because I was actually decent at League. Um, I, 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 I was decent enough that I would like play. I would 1v1 my... Fr- I had like a group of guys and they were like, she's not that good. And so I was like, okay, let's go 1v1. Let's let's do this. Let's let's show you. And then I would cream them, and they're like, "Oh, like uh, she can actually." Yeah, I mean, it, it can be particularly for women. It can be sharing. Um, uh, yeah, the, the the amount of information people share without realizing it on games is insanity. And then, um, but it's also like, um for women doxing can be very serious because not all people are people who are friendly. What? Yeah. Unbelievable. I know. So I did yeah. So I definitely use my gaming experience in my books because like the mm. weird crazy stuff that happens is stuff. Yeah. It's amazing how many people are like, they forget that you're actually female. No. Or, like, or like people are like, that's not realistic. That doesn't happen. And I'm like, are you? No, that I is I so from my own experiences. Yeah, no, I, I have a friend actually who is writing something about a game and he goes, okay, I didn't believe it, but every female I've talked to says the same thing. So apparently we have a problem. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, the girl that's is so- a guy in real life. Yeah, that was. Yeah, it's the girl gamers, the unicorn. Of yeah, I know. I remember being like, at Dragon Con at 18 and being told I was a unicorn. I was a little creeped out by that guy. No lie. That's a bit. I would be. If you watch, crazy um, there, there's a, I think it's Australian the YouTubers that do. Oh, shoot. The, I mean, I also know guys who deliberately guy. play women because they think it's hilarious. Well, and like I, when I would play, like, when I first started D&D, I went on to Roll20, and I joined about 30 or 40 different groups trying to find one that I liked because I would get in and they would make me super uncomfortable being the only girl in the session. And they're like, oh, yeah. and they would just, they went off the rails. And I'm just like, okay, guys, I, I, have you never talked to a girl before? Probably. Yeah. I mean, if you want to stereotype, they probably haven't. So I mean, I definitely have had guys, and I'm like, that's massively inappropriate. By the way, just so you know, uh, the funny thing is, you're like, when I started D and D, and I'm like, and then I have to remember that you're much younger than I am. Hmm. <laughs> Get that. There was one other question I was going to ask, but I think it's a good time to give you guys chances to talk about your upcoming projects and announcements. So I want to hear from Saskia because we've heard from Jay and we've heard from Sean. I want to give her a little bit of time to talk about her book. Uh, Well, I actually don't have a book. I have an upcoming podcast. And um, I would say... Uh, we're getting everything ready to start it no later than the first of the year, be- okay. just because um, the person who's doing it with me, we've had huh, a very crazy time. I mean, my office exploded, hence the uh, parts of bookshelves. Um, so, uh, but you can find me on Facebook as Seska Small. You can find me on I think I'm on Instagram as fantasy page to stage and on uh, TikTok as Doc Seska. So, um, and I will be, I put out book reviews, um, funny things. And then of course you can also find my biggest project that I work on throughout the year is the page to stage costume contest, which is a literature based international costume contest that we've had at DragonCon the last couple of years. So there, if you're an author or a very passionate fan, we have a link on our website, DC Page to Stage, for submitting characters that you would love to see played. So if you're thinking like, well, what do I need to know? You don't have to be the author to submit the character because trust me, we've had everybody from Jules Verne in, on up entered and um, he's definitely not alive for that. Dead. Yeah, shh, shh. there's. I met somebody who knew, who thought he was still alive. They were really passionately waiting for the next book. It was really an awkward conversation. 
Um, okay, it wasn't awkward. I thought it was great fun. Um, but then, but also, so, but think about it, like how the character description is going to be how you would describe the author, the, it, this person, if you saw them in a lineup, you know, how tall are they? What are their hair color? Da, 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 da. So it's a great con competition. If you know cosplayers, you can either self-nominate or nominate somebody. You can self-nominate yourself or, which I know sounds redundant, but I'm being very clear for a reason. We've had this question a lot. Or um, a, another cosplayer to be part of our invitational division. So, and then uh, you'll also be able to find me. The other thing that I'm working on is Contoberfest, which is going to be in Helen, Georgia in 20. 24 and it's going to be deep south cons something i don't know what number of i'm invited out. right <laughs> you're saying you so. me, woman we would hope so you and your crazy yeah. wig um so i kind of talked about a little bit earlier i'm working on book three uh for my series which will actually be the final book. <laughs> can i be the programming director for rock 69 too <laughs> Shh, he's, he's talking outside voice. <laughs> Not a big deal. Uh, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm finishing up my trilogy uh, for book three. Hopefully, to have that out beginning of the it's year. It's only going to be three books. Uh, this one, yeah. Um, sadly, it didn't do, do as well as I was hoping. So I had to. I just want. I want to make sure it's unlike some done. other people. I finish it, yeah, and have just it done. And I'm, I'm working on another. Uh, <laughs> project that I have coming up. I'm hoping to have that one out early um, early next year as well. So I'm hoping to have them both out pretty close. And then audio for book two with Luke Daniels comes out in January. So Ooh, you got Luke to do it? Yeah. Luke Luke some good stuff. One, so I got, uh, he'll be doing book two and three when I get that one done. <laughs> so That's it just crazy. takes a while. I can't get the dual releases because he's like six months out at least. Uh, yeah, I mean, scheduling. yeah, Luke and Travis are like in Steve, yeah. yeah, so busy. So, I know. So, the other sorry, one, okay, you've hit on some of my favorite, but Nick Podell is still my favorite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nick's Nick's like the, all uh, of the big narrators are so, so busy. They're, yep. they're, it's crazy. Even like even the not bigger narrators are so busy. Like everyone's yeah. busy. Oh, goodness. Well, I mean, it so, seems like our genre is leaning more towards the audio. Well, no, it, 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 it is. We have so many audio, audio people. Though. Well, is audio really is also one stats. of the... Yeah, it's really hard with stats. I really wish sometimes that we could do auditory breaks, but that's only because I work with numbers. Absolutely. You mean like Siphon right. Book 1 and or Book 2 with its like four pages of stats? Stop it. We don't <laughs> talk about that. I didn't write you know, you know, okay. I just really use it as down. an excuse. <laughs> So, Sean, no, here's right. I don't listen to books, and so I didn't think about it. In Sean, here's the problem, right? Past, you crunched them down, so it's it. a lot smaller now. No, no, right. Sean, Sean, yeah. here's the problem. Both she and Bryce have had this happen. I haze them as I'm listening to their audiobooks, and I stop what I'm doing, and I text them about it. Oh, yeah. I used to bother Jay about it, that stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are almost done, but my real She's fast, like I, am, I am working on book one. Well, okay. I'm re-editing book one through three of Touch of Power, actually. Um, and I will be putting out an Omni with edits. Uh, and as I'm doing this, I, this is my prep work for book five, because nice. I'm trying to find all my open ends so that I can work on closing some of them. <laughs> Just Don't add five more onto the back. It'll be fine. Uh, so to be okay. fair, I, I, I'm i not like you. I can't do trilogies. I write Slice of Life and I don't. Apparently, I, I'm like four books in and it's like 15 yeah. days have passed. And I'm two books yeah. in and I mean, like maybe two days I mean, you've passed. only done 15 days. You might end up with a massive everything. So I mean, I mean to be fair, I think I'm probably going to end that series within three more books. Such power. Mm -hmm. People will cry. Oh, oh, yeah. they will that would make me cry. Very sad, me but I'm gonna once I finish as long as she comes out with something to hide from everyone for about better. a year and just be I like, be no, no. I am honestly convinced that's why George R. R. Martin has not finished uh, Game of Thrones. So he's already got paid for it. He don't care. <laughs> no, no, he, he does care. He cares, but he just doesn't want to hear anybody bitching about it, which I don't really blame him. He already made his money know, off the show. It's not going anywhere else now. So, 
All right, guys, you've you've made my I night. One this of those guys. A great panel, <laughs> and we're so glad you're here. Um, just so you know, guys, there is a Discord or chat. So if you have other questions you want to ask not these wonderful toxic. panelists, it is there, and it is a oh, you get on that thing. site where we have love for one another. So if you've got your questions, put them up on Discord. Or they might, they might, they might answer. They might not, but they're they're there to, to let you chat. So we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. This was this was amazing. It's fun. Thanks for coming. Night, guys. I'm gonna keep waving.